When we got Trudy and Turnip as puppies, we hoped that one day they would grow up into a loving couple and give us their own litter of puppies. And exactly that happened. Nature can be trusted in that sense after all. We had carefully selected them from different litters, studying their pedigrees to ensure they are not related. Airedale Terriers are a relatively rare breed in Ireland, so it was important to know that Turnip's background is in Romania, whereas Trudy has English heritage. We knew Trudy and Turnip had made it all right, but Trudy did not give anything away until we scanned her at five weeks, definitely in pup. The vet confirmed at least three, maybe five or even seven pups. So now we could prepare for the arrival of the pups with three weeks to go. We are first time breeders, so we can't share vast experience or anything with you. We read up a lot about whelping and puppies and a couple of experienced breeders also helped us with advice and information. Thanks Gemma and Susan. We hope that telling you about our journey might help some of you prepare for their own bitches whelping perhaps. Trudy and Turnip are both outdoor dogs. They are used to and like sleeping in a pen next to our house. So we decided against bringing Trudy inside the house to whelp. This would have been too confusing for her. Instead, we prepared this calf hutch right outside our front door. It has sufficient height and a nice small entrance, plus a ventilation hole at the top. I took advice from breeding websites about putting a layer of newspaper down as a sub-layer of bedding on top of a thick rubber mat. But Trudy just shredded the newspaper with her feet when moving about so I won't bother with that next time. I scattered a good layer of wood shavings onto the mat, ensuring that there is no drafty gap between the ground and the calf hutch. Tim built a simple frame out of pipe fittings and steel bar. This frame is about one meter by one meter and about 10 to 15 centimeters off the ground. It ensures that when Trudy lies down and pushes up against the sides of the hutch, the puppies won't get crushed or suffocated by accident. We fixed a board across the door of the hutch, Trudy. which Trudy can jump over to get in and out, which keeps the draft out and all the puppies safely inside at the same time. Very young puppies are unable to regulate their body heat sufficiently. So it is important to make sure that the air temperature is cosy, about 30 degrees at time of birth and for the next 10 days or so. We use a standard heat lamp with a 150 watt infrared bulb. It hangs on a chain and can be adjusted easily. The cable just goes out through the ventilation hole and to an extension lead plugged into a socket in the house. We prepared the calf hutch for Trudy about two weeks before whelping so that she could sleep in it at night and get used to everything. As this was Trudy's and our first litter, it was an exciting waiting time for us all. We didn't know which signs, if any, she would give us when she was getting close to giving birth. For a few days I took her temperature as some mothers-to-be dropped their body temperature by a small amount, 24 to 48 hours before whelping. But I found her temperature was going up and down every day anyways, with no signs of imminent whelping. And we just watched for more obvious signs. In fact, Trudy did it all according to the book. The morning of giving birth, day 62 of pregnancy, she went off to dig out her favourite hole in the bank behind the house. She obviously had different plans about where to whelp. The hole was far too small and damp and cool, Trudy. so we encouraged her back to the hutch, to go for where she week. soon started panting and resting on her side. And in the afternoon the first puppy arrived. 
we had been given confirmation by the vet of such a vague number of puppies, and as we kept counting beyond seven, we thought she must be finished soon. In the end, she gave birth to eleven puppies, but sadly, the last two didn't make it. Trudy was exhausted by then, giving birth for six hours or so and already starting to feed the first few puppies. But we are very happy with the nine adorable puppies she has left. As she was a first-time mum, I stayed with Trudy for whelping, helping her to tear the sacks and present the puppy to her for licking, and also helping her if necessary by drying some puppies off with a towel and of course disinfecting their navels. The puppies can't hear or see for the first 10 to 14 days of their lives, nor can they walk. They push their chubby little bodies along on their stumpy short legs, responding to the smell of their mum, in search of her teats. Trudy only has eight teats, but nine babies, so it is a wriggly scramble to get the best place. The good thing about young puppies is that the mother does all the cleaning. She licks her puppies behinds regularly to stimulate pooing and weeing and licks it all clean afterwards. So cleaning out the hutch keeps to a minimum really at this stage. She's just full belly. Oh my gosh, you're so fat and choppy. Ooh. A little bit of fluff in your face. There. They're really roundy. Things, She's don't they? Especially a little tail. So soft. But okay. she's very fat and squishy. Mm -hmm. And then we got one. A little bit smaller. Let's do yeah. Perfect. Just a bit smaller. That's all. Can't even say, look into the camera. Because <laughs> they can't. Not yet. There's still a shiny nose. I weigh all puppies every day to ensure they all gain weight. Okay, what does he weigh? She. 451 euros. Uh, I mean, pounds, no, grams. Oh, hello, Daddy. As Sorry. nature has it, of course there are ones that are quicker to thrive and some are slower. But the main thing is that they should gain about 30 to 50 grams per day in body weight at this stage. I help the lightest ones along a bit by putting them on easily reachable teats first and giving them a head start before letting all the others have their go. Trudy completely lost her appetite just before birthing. In fact, she was sick quite a lot, which is natural as she is so flooded with hormones. She loved milky liquid food for the first couple of days after whelping, a mix of rice pudding, porridge and high calcium bitch and puppy food soaked in milk. From day three or four, she moved back to a more normal diet. I give her ad-lib bitch and poppy nuts at the moment and she gets a squirt of multivitamins with those, a bit of milk and also some mints and eggs or cooked fish once a day. She has to eat for 10 after all. We took the front bar of the whelping frame out after day 4 or so to make more room for Trudy to move around comfortably. The temperature has shot up here with the fine summer weather, so I'm keeping an eye on the temperature throughout the day, adjusting the heat lamp and even switching it off for some time. Trudy finds it too hot in the hutch for most of the time, so we need to encourage her gently and praise her loads when she goes in to feed her puppies. They don't mind being left between feeds, all they do is sleep anyways. And what about the father? Poor Turnip. He is so curious about what is happening inside right. the hutch. Who are these tiny little yelping wriggly things in there? Will he ever be allowed to play with them? Turnip, Turnip you will have to wait a little longer. But I am sure soon enough you'll have heaps of fun with your wonderful offspring.